Hey folks, if you're looking for an in-depth review, you're in the right place. As for this week, I'm going to be talking about Kagan Games Simulacra, an investigative visual novel that serves as a spiritual successor to their earlier title, Sarah is Missing. Which begs the question, is Simulacra and the series at large worth keeping an eye on? Or should you dial back on the enthusiasm? I'm your host Arlian, let's find out together. It all starts with the arrival of a mysterious phone. No message, no clues, and yet it's not long before a mysterious glitch occurs, providing you access to its contents. And yet what starts out as casual curiosity begins to take a darker turn, as you're forced to come to terms with the fact that the phone's owner, Anna, is missing and the secret to her disappearance rests somewhere within the chat logs on that phone. And as someone new to the series, I have to say I dug the concept. I really enjoyed the mystery aspect to Simulacre of delving through chat messages, emails, and even online dating apps, all in search of narrative tidbits to latch onto in order to find leads. The fact that this is a mystery also lent itself rather well to the hunt for secondary story elements, as I found myself frequently digging a little bit deeper than I needed to in search of anything extra, such as this particular secret and everything that ensued. That said, whilst I did enjoy the gradual manner in which you find yourself piecing together the game's mysteries, I do have a bit of a nitpick, which mostly boils down to a matter of tone. See, whilst a lot of the game could be summed up as carefully sifting through someone's digital trail, there are dialogue elements to be found, which is where the game's visual novel elements kick in, as you'll find yourself communicating with some of Anna's contacts in an attempt to collaboratively hunt her down. And for the most part, I think these are fairly well done, as the decisions you make while talking with these characters will influence things as you progress forward and ultimately play a part in which the game's ending she'll wind up receiving. And then we get to Greg, and oh boy, this man, I I don't want to get into spoilers, but he's so comically over the top that he does a great job of just derailing the overall mood of the game. In fact, don't take for my word for it, just take a listen here. Fuck this silent treatment shit! Oh. Fuck it so much! Because that, that's peak Greg, which sorta of kills me because if you ignore the moments where he chews up the scenery in a hammy display, there's an overall creepy story to navigate. One which I actually wound up curious enough about that I actually played through the game to see all of its endings, a decision that was helpfully facilitated by the New Game Plus mode which drastically speeds up text and message scrolling and thus allows you to ramp through all of the earlier segments of the game to revisit pivotal moments so you can pursue a different path. Or be a hideous troll for the sake of an achievement. That said, whilst the storytelling elements kept me invested in my future playthroughs, I will admit that I wasn't quite as invested in the mechanical elements the second time around. That's not to say that I don't think they work, the puzzle solving related to figuring out how to get an influencer's phone number, how to fraudulently apply for a work position, and other associated bits of sleuthing are certainly satisfying the first time around. That said, once you've tracked down the clues and ascertained the answers, there's not much to set the playthroughs apart on this level. Yes, there was a novelty to the corrupted data word games that saw me rearranging sentences in my initial playthrough to discover more lore, or piecing together pieces in order to potentially discover clues, but once you've done them, their return on future playthroughs is more of a mild speed bump. That is, unless you like to go secret hunting. Like I mentioned earlier, there is a touch of content you can discover off the beaten trail, the likes of which adds something to fuss over and figure out, though it's ultimately a small segment. But while I wasn't as wowed by the mechanical aspects of future playthroughs, I can't fault its presentation. As far as a fictional phone UI goes, Iris is pretty rad. I found it intuitive enough to use, and snooping through and discovering its nuances was satisfying. There's some good effort put into stuff like the fake websites and apps as well. What's more, when the game decides to be a bit creepy or uncanny, it does a decent job of keeping you on your toes. That said, what I really need to give credit here is the acted scenes, both for the vlogs and the video calls. 
While I may have poked fun at Greg for being an over-the-top cock, I enjoyed the other characters thoroughly, with special credit going to Taylor. The actor for his segments is great. I got my eyes on you. You're everything that I see. I want your heart, love, and emotion. Endlessly, I can't get over you. You left your mark on me. I want your heart, love, and emotion. Endlessly, I won't. And it's just, I wound up so invested in his character. The sound design doesn't just end there either. While the soundtrack elements are fairly limited to distinct moments, the effects that accompany your journey are anything but. I found myself getting startled by the intrusive ring of an unexpected phone call, sure, but there's also the subtle touches that really made me uneasy. Bits of background noise which had me side-eyeing the doors in my room as I heard a knock. Which, at the end of the day, really helped. Because I do like Simulacra, I really liked the way it had me hunt down its story in order to progress through, and I felt that its culmination worked rather well. And yet, I'll admit that there were times when I struggled with the tone of the game. As much as it leans into being a mystery with horror elements, there's definitely some lengthy segments which felt a bit closer to a dark comedy and that did feel a bit like it was running counterintuitively to what it was trying to establish for its story. Still, if you couldn't tell, it wasn't enough to dissuade me from trying to see everything the game had to offer, and it left me eager to plunge not only into the sequel, but to even give the free side game Simulacra Pipe Dreams a go, so I can safely call this game a hit. Though, I am hoping that its sequel will provide a bit more innovation insofar as the gameplay investigative elements. Anywho, thanks for tuning in! If you agree, disagree, or just have something to say to me, feel free to comment. And if you enjoy my efforts to create new indie reviews, interviews, and gaming content, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you know there's a new release. For the Discord savvy folks, click the video description to find a link to my community, The Crit Hit Cauldron, and to my Patreon so you can support me and the other members of Crit Hit. Lastly, if you want to see me get dunked on in indie games live, check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash That said, I'll catch y'all on the next episode of Crit Hit. Take care till then, folks.